Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So in an earlier video, I showed off how I had changed these terrible original analog sticks for the Odroid Go Super into some better analog sticks. As you can see here, these things are pretty terrible. They look really flimsy. They're really flat looking. They're sharp enough to cut a steak dinner. Like I just don't really like these analog sticks at all. And so for less than $20, I was able to swap them out for these ones instead. Now these are original PS Vita analog sticks and you can get them on eBay. And there's also a website I really like called My Retro Game Case that sells them as well. And I'll leave links to that down below. But at the end of the day, this is probably the best $20 you can spend on this device because without these, I really don't like this device. But with them, I tend to really like this device. One of my favorite aspects of these analog sticks is that they have this little grippy top to them. And it allows you to really keep your thumbs held in place while you're playing with it. Honestly, I prefer these analog sticks over the regular Switch analog sticks that you find on a lot of other devices. Unfortunately, these don't click down, so there is no L3 or R3 option on this device, but either way, this is still a big improvement over the original. So without any further ado, let's jump into this. One of the coolest things about this mod is that it doesn't take a lot of work, because these analog sticks just fit perfectly in the same holder and everything else for this device. Now it's a little bit tricky to get into where you need to get to it, but other than that, it's really not that bad. I was able to knock this whole thing out in about 20-25 minutes. So first things first, just go ahead and unscrew everything on the back of your device. These are all Phillips head screws. Now once you have all the screws out, it just comes out very easily. There are no latches or clips or anything else keeping you there. I recommend you take out all of your shoulder buttons so that you know where they are because even though they're not labeled, you actually do have to put them in a specific spot. So just keep them where you found them. So go ahead and unplug the speaker cable, and then also unplug the battery cable. These ones are really kind of tight in there, so it might take a minute to pull them out. Okay, let's get a quick look at the board here. You can see there are two screws on each side that are the same size as the others that hold the board in place. You have to remove these because the analog sticks are behind the board here. Okay, at this point the board has been removed, but at the same time you have to remove the ribbon cable here from the LCD display. So what you have to do is you have to push the little black levers on each side of the ribbon cable and then slip the ribbon cable out. And try to be as gentle as possible during this part. Okay, so here's the front of the board here, and you can see the analog sticks are actually just screwed right directly onto the board. So at this point, all you really have to do is just remove them from the board themselves. And again, these also use Phillips head screws. Now if you look on the back here, you can see that the ribbon here is connected by a very small connector here by the battery. So in order to unconnect the ribbon, all you have to do is flip up that small little black piece. And it's very delicate, so make sure you're careful with it. Now holding the stick in place is a little piece of plastic, which you can see right here, and I'll show you that here in a second as well. But first, let's install the new one. So you want to set the analog stick in place, and then you want to use that little plastic piece right here to put on the back side of it so that it holds it into place. And this can only be set in one way, so there's no possibility of putting it backwards or anything else like that, so don't worry about that part. So for me, the easiest way to do it was to take this plastic piece and put it in its appropriate holes and then take the analog stick and line it up appropriately there and then try to get the screws at least partially into it so that it holds in place fairly firmly so you can get the rest of the way in. So there you go, you can see on this side you have that plastic piece that's held in place. And then on this front side you can see the analog stick which is held in place by that plastic piece. Okay, so now let's get that ribbon cable in. 
It's a little bit tricky, but I found the best thing to do is just to hold it in place and then just slide it in with your thumb and then push down on that little lever again to push it down. And like I mentioned, these things are delicate. So when I was putting it into place, the little black piece actually broke off. I'll show you more of that in a second. But for now, let's change out the next analog stick. So same deal here. You just want to unscrew this analog stick, undo that ribbon cable, and then add the new one in. This time around, I put in the ribbon first. I'm not really sure which one was easier. It's really going to be up to you. And you probably noticed right there, the black thing broke again when I was latching it together. Luckily, I don't plan on ever changing these analog sticks again, but it is something to keep in mind. So you can see here on both sides, that little black piece that was holding the ribbon cable secure, it broke off. But luckily, it secured it first before it broke off, so at least the ribbon cable is actually nice and snug in there, but I don't think I'm comfortable taking it out again, so I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. It's not the end of the world to me, but it's just something to be aware of when you do this yourself. Okay, so to make things easier on ourselves, I'm just going to use a pack of cards here to keep the device elevated so that way the buttons don't get in the way when I'm screwing everything together. So now I'm going to attach the board again. The most important part here is getting that ribbon cable seated. What I found the easiest thing to do is just as you're pushing the board in is also guide the ribbon cable in as well. Make sure that the levers that secure it in place are nice and loose, and then I just use my fingers to kind of guide it in as I was pushing it down. It took a few tries, but honestly, it was pretty easy once I got the hang of it. And make sure once you get it in that you fasten it really nice and tight. After that, the board should just slide into place really easily. At that point, you can screw the board back in. And then reinsert all of the shoulder buttons. And then finally, all you have to do is reattach the speaker and the battery cables. These are a little bit tricky, so make sure you get them in nice and secure. Okay, the only thing left now is just to screw everything back into place. I found that getting the screws into the hole to actually start being able to screw them in was a little bit more difficult when you're going in than coming out. And I found the easiest thing to do is just to set the screw into the hole and then tap it a little bit and it'll fall into place. All right, so here we are with a brand new Odroid Gold Super with these really nice analog sticks. Now, there are a lot of things I really don't like about this device, but analog sticks are not one of them at this point. Sure, the buttons could be bigger, and you know, I think that the D-pad could be bigger too, but this analog stick really does make me enjoy the device a lot more. So let me know what you think in the comments below. You know, this is a device that costs anywhere from 80 to $90 or about $100 after it's shipped to you. So I'm curious to know if you think that after adding $20 of extra parts, does this still make it a budget friendly device? Honestly, I wish Hard Kernel had used these analog sticks in the first place, and I would have been happy to pay an additional $10 or $15 or whatever it would have been to make sure that I get quality product the first time around. But at the same time, I do find it kind of fun to be able to open up my device and make it better than when I got it. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming.